1975. An American Apollo spacecraft and a Soviet Soyuz spacecraft prepare to join in Earth orbit, 140 miles above the Atlantic near Portugal. During their two-day joint flight, astronauts and cosmonauts transferred between spacecraft. They conducted space experiments and they tested a compatible rendezvous and docking system evaluating its potential as the universal standard on future spacecraft for docking and rescue. The mission climaxed more than three years of planning and preparation, a time during which differences in language, in technology, in political creed were set aside in favor of the common goal. This was the mission that opened the door to international manned spaceflight, the mission that set the course for joint flights of the future. This was the mission of Apollo Soyuz. In the pre-dawn calm of July 15th, the methodical countdown of Apollo moved with customary precision toward a mid-afternoon launch. And as dawn approaches the Florida coast, a similar drama is nearing climax, half a world away. The Soyuz spacecraft, its crew approaching the end of pre-launch checks, is about to signal the start of this historic mission. The launch command has been given. At Mission Control Moscow, flight controllers monitor Soyuz as it gathers momentum en route to orbital altitude. Less than nine minutes after launch, Soyuz, powered by triple booster stages, is inserted into its assigned orbit. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. The countdown has proceeded smoothly uh, this morning, and the uh, flight crew here at the Kennedy Space Center were alerted about 10.30. The weatherman continues to be cooperative. A near-perfect day for the launch, made to order for the thousands lining the roadsides and beaches to witness this Apollo Saturn finale. starts at 3.1 seconds in the countdown. We'll hold down till thrust builds up. 11. Engine 10, ready light on. 9, 10, 9, 8, 8, 8 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 3 2, 2, engine sequence start. Zero. 1, 0, launch commit. We have a liftoff. All engines building up thrust. Moving out. Clear the tower. Uh, roger, tower clear. Roger, Tommy, 
got good thrust on all engines here, right on the money. Pitch program, we'll shake lift off, but it's smooth as silk now, dude. Okay. Project, we're looking good. Yo, no, we're on the way. Rocket Tommy looking real fine. All in out, three miles in altitude, one mile down range. Stand by for mode one Bravo. Mark, one Bravo. One Bravo, two G's. And we're still uh, through max Q, everything's still looking good. Hello, Houston, you're go for station. All right, go for station. Okay, and that flight is out on the 4B. Give it acceleration. Right Hello, Houston, we've had a PE shift, shift and thrust is up on this 4B, looking real fine, right on the money. Uh, Roger, Dick. Capcom Dick truly advising the crew that everything looks good on the side and second stage. The tower, Jeff, there she goes. Roger, tower, Jetson, your most... And the launch tower no longer needed, uh, has been jettisoned as planned. 280 miles down, range trajectory very good. Stage 530, onboard trajectory looks beautiful. Roger, good care, Tom, you're right on the money. Now we're predicting a guided cutoff at 9 or plus 4 6. Standing by for shutdown. Stand by for mode 4 capability. Roger. Mark, mode 4 capability. Roger. Right. We go! Roger. Okay. And we're right in there. According to the computer, in an 89.4 by 83.1. Okay, thanks, Vince. We'll check it ourselves. Apollo Houston, we're about a minute from LOS. We'll see you at Ara at 2 plus uh, 27. And when we got another, got a little minute here, we can't help but ask you how Vance and Deke are both liking the zero G. Super Vance, can't Really savoring every event up here, Dick. It's really great. Sounds like fun. Wish I was there. Yeah, absolutely. Tell you one thing is the TV cameras don't work any better than zero G. Houston at Rosman for a real short pass, about one minute, how do you read? Uh, Roger, got a good hard dock, looks real lined up, and all the latches are good. Okay, super, uh, Tom. Go ahead. And before the flight is three hours old, the docking module is smoothly extracted from the second stage booster, left trailing behind. During the next 40 hours, Apollo, through a series of maneuvers, will slowly close the orbital gap with Soyuz. Okay, copy. This is Apollo Control. Apparently the uh, TPI maneuver was indeed successful. Tom Stafford reported from Apollo that he was station keeping with Soyuz. Both control centers, Moscow and Houston, have given a go for docking. Good job. Let's say that. Look at my I am approaching Soyuz. Oh, please don't forget about your engine. <laughs> Less than five meters distance. Three meters. Three meters. One meter. Contact. Capture. We also have capture. Soyuz and Apollo are shaking hands now. Around the world, millions watch and listen as the two spacecraft become one. Now they wait for the next dramatic event, the meeting of Soviet and American crews. The camera. Ah! Ah, it's just yeah. a turn. Got it? Yeah, it'll, it'll stay open. Uh, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Tom. Lexi. Just a moment. <laughs> uh, okay, turn on the camera. Hit the remote. Okay. Here. Camera. Uh, I have to see you. Uh, here. Among ceremonies scheduled for this first day of joint flight are the exchanges of national flags, 
by the spacecraft commanders. Later, they signed certificates of docking for the Paris-based Fédération Aéronautique Internationale, the organization that validates all aviation and spaceflight records. Finally, they sit down to dinner in space, Russian style. Right now, I've just finished some strawberries reconstituted. I'm just eating some too. We're getting ready to eat some borscht, as you can see here. It's been a most rewarding two days here in space working with the Apollo Soyuz project. Soon after the third transfer, the, the spacemen field questions States, from the Soviet and the American Soviet press. Union and the rest of the world has seen is the results of the determination, the cooperation and the efforts by the governments of the two countries, by the managers, engineers, and all the workers involved. It's been a very rewarding experience. Roger, it's Moscow's uh, turn to ask uh, the questions that have been proposed by the press there. Thank you, Bo. How comfortable do you consider the Apollo spacecraft to be, and how do you like the American food? Uh, no, as all philosophers says, the best part of a good dinner is not what you eat, but with whom you eat. Uh, today, North of New England, as the workday ends, Tom Stafford presents Alexei Leonov's spruce tree seeds to be planted in Russian soil, a gift from the American people to the people of the Soviet Union to provide a living memorial to the flood. The spacecraft commanders also join the two halves of an Apollo-Soyuz medal, one half launched with Soyuz and the other half with Apollo to symbolize the link-up in orbit. When time comes to retire to their own craft, it's Dasvidanya and goodbye. The joint experiments would resume the following day, but only by voice. The next face-to-face -face meeting would be in Moscow in September. This is Apollo Control. At acquisition here, we should have confirmation of undocking and a uh, real-time television picture of uh, Soyuz from Apollo as it backs away in preparation for the solar eclipse experiment. Solar eclipse occurs briefly and infrequently on Earth, giving scientists too short a time for adequate study. But with two manned spacecraft and proper maneuvering, a solar eclipse can be simulated. Thus, with Apollo blotting out the solar disk, the Soyuz crew train their cameras on the solar corona, recording pictures for later study. They dock again, providing yet another test of the compatible docking mechanism. Apollo Houston through at and we're hearing your call. Uh, Roger, we have docked. Everything was on time, though. After some three hours, the two spacecraft separate for the last time, and Apollo maneuvers into position for the final joint experiment, ultraviolet absorption, the measurement of oxygen and nitrogen particles in the upper atmosphere. Apollo directs light beams of special wavelengths to a reflector mounted on Soyuz. The beams bounce back to Apollo and are there analyzed by a spectrometer. It is the first such measurement by this method. The results have given investigators a clearer knowledge of outer atmospheric makeup, including the quantities of ozone in the upper atmosphere. Termination of the experiment signals the end of the joint phase of the mission, and the separation between spacecraft grows more distant with each successive orbit. Apollo will fly solo for four more days, but the crew of Soyuz makes ready for return to Earth. Beneath its single striped parachute, Soyuz settles to Earth in Soviet Central Asia. Retro rockets cushion the impact. 
Three memorable years have ended. Alexei Leonov and Valery Kubasov have secured yet another place in the history of spaceflight. Apollo continues in orbit, carrying out the remainder of the 27 experiments in space sciences, life sciences, and applications. As the mission comes down to the wire, the docking module is jettisoned, and it too becomes part of an experiment. With the two instrumented spacecraft close together in the same orbit, it is possible to measure their relative movements caused by variations in Earth's gravity. The technique provides a means of accurately mapping the Earth's mass structure on a global basis. Bino. Go. Guido. Go. Retro. Go flight. GNC. Go flight. Apollo Eco. Control, 99 hours, 29 minutes, Go. phase Go. elapsed time. Go. Flight Director Go. Frank Go. Littleton. Go. Pulsing his flight Go. controllers. Ecom Go. reports everything looks fine. Go, Go for the burn. Okay, Crip, everything's up. Great ship up here. The only thing we're concerned about is that you've got all your splice down parties coordinated over. Well, I've uh, been working on that. <laughs> okay, sounds good. <laughs> In Pacific waters west of Hawaii, Apollo reaches the end of its journey and the end of an era. The spirit and the letter of the 1972 joint agreement had been dramatically fulfilled. For all the cooperative space efforts to come, the groundwork has been laid by Apollo Soyuz, the model for the future.